Udo is an edible plant native to Japan with two main varieties, Yama Udo and Nank Udo. Yama Udo sports a distinctive green color and has a thick, upright stem, usually growing between 24 to 36 inches tall and 1 to 2 inches in diameter. This variety grows wild and is typically harvested in early spring from March to April. On the other hand, Nank Udo is white and is shielded from sunlight to maintain its top-notch quality. It's harvested from December to April and reaches about 28 inches in height. Harvesting Udo is a meticulous process that demands great care, as farmers often work in challenging conditions, frequently squatting for long periods. Many face issues with their legs and back due to the nature of the job. To prevent Udo from turning green when exposed to light, farmers have turned to growing and harvesting it indoors. In Tachikawa, Udo production has reached around 450 tonnes annually. Renowned for its crisp texture and sweet flavour, Udo has become a celebrated delicacy in the region. Have you ever tried this unique plant? Drop your thoughts in the comments below and let us know what you think. Next up, lotus root, an esteemed ingredient in Japanese cuisine, is harvested around Kazumura Lake. This lake spans 150 square kilometers and provides the perfect environment for lotus roots to thrive. Lotus roots grow beneath the mud and take from July to March of the following year to fully mature. The peak harvesting season runs from October to March. Harvesting lotus roots is quite the undertaking. Farmers work in deep, murky mud, using their hands and water jets to locate and harvest the roots without damaging them. On average, each lotus root costs about 280 per kilogram. Farmers kneel in deep water and wash the roots multiple times to ensure their quality. The roots are then carefully transported to preserve their whiteness and appearance, which helps boost their market value. After harvesting, Lotus roots undergo several washing stages to remove all mud and keep their outer skin intact. They are then carefully transported and packaged to ensure the highest quality when they reach consumers. Shiitake mushrooms are a prized variety commonly cultivated in forests across Japan. Yeah. 
farmers select oak trees with diameters ranging from 10 to 20 centimetres to create the ideal conditions for shiitake mushrooms to thrive. The oak logs are stacked and transported to the mushroom cultivation area, where the farmers then drill small holes into the logs to inoculate them with mushroom spawn. Drop a one in the comments to let us know you're still watching the video. Shiitake mushroom spawn is inserted into the holes using special tools to ensure precise placement and depth. After inoculation, the logs are positioned in suitable spots in the forest to allow the mushrooms to develop naturally. Shiitake mushrooms grow slowly, and when harvest time arrives, they are collected by hand. This harvesting process requires careful handling to avoid damaging the mushrooms which are then stored to prevent spoilage before reaching the market. Shiitake mushrooms are prized for their rich flavor and high nutritional value, making them a valuable specialty, particularly when exported as dried mushrooms. Reishi mushrooms, renowned in traditional medicine, have a unique cultivation and harvesting process. Farmers inoculate the mushroom spores into logs and bury them underground, where the mushrooms take between 75 to 90 days to develop. Logs with a larger diameter will take longer to produce their first harvest. Mature reishi mushrooms have a reddish-brown color and a thickness ranging from 2.5 to 10 centimeters. During harvest, Farmers typically select mushrooms with a white underside, avoiding those that have turned brown, as this indicates decomposition. After harvesting, the mushrooms are thoroughly washed and dried at temperatures below 50 degrees. Reishi mushrooms are highly valuable, often priced at $200, carlins or more due to their nutritional benefits and medicinal properties. Cabbage is a nutrient-rich vegetable widely cultivated in Japan. Depending on the variety, it grows for about 70 to 115 days and is harvested when the base has a diameter of 10 to 15 centimeters.
farmers cut the cabbage heads off the stalks, leaving a few outer leaves to protect them during storage. On large farms, cabbage harvesting is done using automated machinery attached to tractors, which reduces manual labour. After harvesting, the cabbages are placed in bins and transported to storage facilities, where they are kept fresh and flavourful until they reach consumers. Next up, sweet corn is a valuable crop in the US grown across all 50 states. States like Florida, Washington, Georgia and California are among the top producers. Depending on the farm, sweet corn is harvested either by hand or with machinery. For example, in Florida, sweet corn is harvested by thousands of workers from Mexico and Guatemala each October. In contrast, in California, the sweet corn harvest often takes place at night to avoid the intense daytime heat. After harvesting, Sweet corn is immediately packaged in the field to ensure its quality and freshness before being transported to processing plants. Once processed, sweet corn becomes a key component in America's processed food industry, significantly contributing to the country's agricultural economy. Finally, potatoes are one of the most important crops worldwide, not just for their nutritional value, but also for their high yield. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, the global potato cultivation area reaches about 20 million hectares annually, with a production of up to 370 million tonnes. Potatoes are typically harvested when the plants start to wither and the leaves turn yellow or brown, indicating that the tubers have reached maturity. The ideal time for harvesting potatoes is usually between 80 to 100 days after the plants have sprouted. Research shows that harvesting potatoes at the right time can increase yields by up to 15%. After harvesting, potatoes need to be sorted by size and quality and cleaned to remove any residual soil. Studies show that proper cleaning can reduce the risk of spoilage and rot 
by up to 20%. You can use a potato washer or a soft brush for gentle cleaning. Avoid using too much water pressure as this can damage the tubers. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe and share it with friends and family so they can also get the scoop on global agriculture. Thanks for watching and see you next time.